Okay. Um, I'm going to spend some time talking about subject, object, and inner subjectivity. Now, these are key concepts in a course on language development. Uh, they're especially important for cognitive development overall. And so uh, they're, they're absolutely essential to understand and not to gloss over as you move towards uh, more linguistically oriented concepts such as syntax or uh, vocabulary or phonemic awareness, those types of things. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to understand subject and object as words. Uh, listen to that ject at the end of both of them, subject and object. That comes from the Latin root. Uh, the J-E-C-T at the end of that is the, uh, is the word that means to throw in, uh, in Latin. And you might think of other words where the ject actually preserves that literal meaning, such as inject, uh, which is to actually take something physical and throw it into something else, uh, and eject, which is to uh, forcibly uh, throw something out of something else, and reject has some of that same, uh, same connotation and denotation, and the word project, which means to, to throw something forward. So uh, between those three words, we get the sense that throwing is really a very literal thing. And that uh, when we think about the words subject and object, one of the risks that we run is that we just think of them as abstract words. And they're not. They're actually literally based on that throwing. And the philosopher Martin Heidegger uh, used this understanding of throwing uh, to talk about subjectivity and objectivity in his work, Being and Time, where uh, he described the, the moment of being thrown as the beginning of your life. Uh, the beginning of your life uh, is when you are put into a situation where you can experience things. And that is the throwing that's happening. And then we have Latin prefixes, sub and ob, which, uh, which let us know that the subjectivity is, uh, to, s to some extent, below the, the thrownness. So I don't know why they chose sub uh, for, the, uh, for the prefix there. And ob is to the side of the thrownness. So these are uh, obviously different uh, ways of thinking about what is happening to you during your life. And I have some very specific ways of helping us uh, understand what that means to be able to perceive things and to, uh, to know them uh, during your lifetime. To talk about this is the blur that we often experience when we're uh, inside of a fast-moving object. If you're in a car that's moving very quickly and you look down at the road, uh, what you'll see is you'll see uh, just a blur of weeds and stones and pieces of road and whatever's on the side of the road going by extremely fast. And that's what life is like when you're first born. Uh, when you're first born, uh, your senses are not yet attuned to what's going on around you. And much as in a car, once you're able to kind of sit up and, and gain some perspective and focus, you're able to actually see things while you're hurtling at 90 miles an hour down a highway. Well, hopefully, hopefully you're not driving that fast, but uh, very fast speeds were able to actually gain some focus and not see everything as a blur. And that's what happens to babies when they're born. When babies are first born, uh, more or less what they hear is white noise. Uh, they hear everything kind of mixed in together and they're not able to perceive one thing from the next. Uh, the exception to this is that some babies do actually get somewhat attuned to the, uh, the tone and intonation patterns of their mother's voices and are able to focus on those rather quickly. Uh, but in general, babies just hear a jumble of everything all together and not, not able to pick things out. Uh, the other thing is that their vision is very much the same. Uh, their eyes kind of dart around and they're not able to grab onto or focus on much of anything with their uh, with their eyes. Uh, their bodies, likewise, uh, you've often seen little infants, uh, their arms and legs, which later become very useful to them uh, in terms of gross and fine motor skills, at the beginning are just kind of randomly flailing around. Uh, so all of the things that we use to actually gain uh, focus and perspective for an infant uh, are not 
tuned in at the very beginning of their lives. And so being thrown is really like that very first moment of being shot out of the cannon or the slingshot. Everything is a blur and it takes a little while for us to gain some focus. And focus is what changes everything for a human baby. Uh, once a human is able to focus on things, uh, the, the re reinforcement and response, the feedback that you get from being focused on something is intensely powerful. So uh, let's just imagine that a baby is uh, laying uh, down on a, cri a crib bed and looking up and she sees and hears her primary caregiver. Uh, mother is up there and she sees the face uh, and she hears the voice and that's all kind of in the middle of the blur of everything. She wants that back. And so uh, her, her brain helps her eyes get focused back on that object. Uh, and that moment of focus, that moment of being able to retrain eyes that are otherwise just kind of darting around and doing whatever, is objectivity. Objectivity is the moment of focus. It's not the object. It's not the mother. Objectivity is that ability to focus. A and the subjectivity that it's involved here is uh, out of the big blur of life. This baby has now uh, gained and has been able to maintain a position. Uh, when she does things a certain way, she's able to get focused on mom. And there's some natural uh, element to that, uh, but it's also uh, partly uh, coming out of the direct experience of being interacted with, uh, with uh, objects and people in the world. Now as far as focus goes, there are few things in the world that a baby is going to want to focus on more than mom. Uh, those few things are things like uh, food, and uh, milk uh, and peeing and pooping. Uh, those are all things that, uh, that are objects of focus for a child. And, and now you're thinking peeing and pooping. Well, uh, there have been fairly good uh, research studies that have shown that babies' early smiles, uh, the earliest smiles that you see in infants between the ages of like one month and two months, uh, usually actually occur while the baby is peeing. Uh, so that's where that smile comes from. Guess who reinforces that smile? Uh, the smile comes along, uh, baby smiles, baby's peeing and happy, and then there's mom. And mom sees the smile, and does mom think, oh, baby's peeing? Nope, mom thinks, oh, baby's happy. And so mom gets her face down close to the baby and starts smiling back at the baby and starts creating a little loop there. And this type of interaction is, uh, is the beginnings of intersubjectivity. Uh, a good amount of intersubjectivity comes with m mothers and other people around babies misinterpreting random behaviors for meaningful behaviors. So if a baby is peeing and smiling, the people around the baby react as if the smile is coming from some sort of genuine desire to, to communicate happiness uh, to other people around her. And so uh, that response that the, uh, the people around give uh, is received by the baby as well. Uh, the baby doesn't ignore that, but notices, oh, uh, they're smiling, uh, and uh, after a number of different instances of this, a baby is uh, likely to be uh, trained that uh, she can smile not only for the natural response of doing something bodily, uh, but also to her social partners.